Um, so coming to uh, Spring Boot, uh, how comfortable are you with Spring Boot? Yeah, so I am working uh, like in to Spring Boot from last uh, two and a half years. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, so do you know like what is at the rate auto wallet and at the rate bean? Like what is the difference between them? Yes, at the rate bean and at the rate auto wallet. Okay, so at the rate auto wired is basically for uh, dependency injection that we say IOC inversion of control. So what happens is uh, like uh, for loose coupling what we are doing is earlier what uh, like uh, when we into the program when we needed some dependency like I will talk about the controller into controller when we need the dependency of service class at that time we are creating an instance and like using it uh, using that. So that's a hard coupled code actually but uh, what we have done is dependency injection. So we instead of uh, uh, getting every time an instance we are providing an instance at the starting of the program mm. so uh, with the help of autowired we are uh, providing an instance autowired and then we are giving the instance of that class which class instance is needed into our program so that's uh, the use of autowired and the bean is uh, for like creating the bean that, uh, for uh, uh, telling that it's a bean the method level what, is, what does a bean return? Does it return anything? A bean is a kind of POSO actually. Okay, is it written on top of a method or is it written on top of a class? Uh, it's a method level You are saying POSO? Okay, POSO I am saying for a bean class, like we say that bean is initialized or that. That is a POSO. And the B at the rate bean annotation is a method level annotation. Right, what does it do? Like, what is it, uh, what does that uh, give uh, the benefit of going on top of the method? What is the benefit? Do you know that? Um, no, no, like I have not used this. I see, okay, that's fine, okay. Um, so basically, uh, so you are into uh, more of a uh, a Spring Boot and Spring. Uh, have you also worked on Spring MVC? Or no, Spring I have mainly worked on Spring Boot. Okay, okay. So fine. So um, okay. So what are different uh, design patterns you have used as part of your project? Yeah. So mainly I use traditional design patterns like uh, Singleton Factory, Head Factory, these. Okay. So um, so what is a factory pattern? When do you use it? Yeah, so factory pattern is uh, like when we uh, when we need we want that uh, all the, um, uh, the instances should be initialized from uh, some uh, some class from one centralized class. So what we are doing is we are creating a factory class and we are providing all the access to like factory class to create some instances. If we want the, the instance of some class, so we are sending some string or some argument to the factory class that we want this type of uh, instance so and we have already mentioned that blueprint into the factory class that if if something comes like this then create an instance of this and provide to that class so the oh. instance creation is with the factory class oh. okay so can, can, like, can, you, yeah. can you give an example yeah, yeah bean factory uh, into spring boot it's a uh, into spring it's a uh, uh, implementation of factory design pattern Okay. Have you used anywhere like separately out of the framework? Have you used uh, anywhere? Yes, uh, like in uh, not in my current project, but before this I have worked. Fine. Okay, that's okay. Uh, and uh, coming to uh, singleton, you have used singleton, singleton pattern as well. Sorry, yes, singleton pattern. Yeah, yeah. Have you used singleton, yes. singleton yes. pattern? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you know like what is immutable class in Java? Mm, yes. Uh, I will start with example like string. So immutable mm -hmm. class is uh, something that can't be changed actually. So that's why we are saying mm -hmm. string is an example. So okay. So what what can't be changed? Yeah. Can so you like this value immu can't be changed. Let's say you know I want to make my class as an immutable class. Can I uh, have that customized yes, customization? Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. So uh, for that uh, for that uh, what we need to first of all we need to create the final uh, that class is final. And so mm -hmm. that nobody can inherit it, and uh, and then we need mm -hmm. to uh, not we we should not provide setters for this so that uh, nobody can uh, set any values, and mm -hmm. 
one more thing we need to do deep uh, cloning of all the reference like if we have employee and then inside that we are having hello? the address instance hello so we need to deep do do the deep cloning of the uh, other objects and uh, and all the private yeah, all the be. variables should be declared as private yeah. then it will be okay uh, all all wait okay what is it all variables should be private uh, declared private yeah can you write that implementation single trip oh, no sorry immutable okay okay class like employee we have this class inside this class we are we are having like here i have declared them as private so now i will, uh, sorry earlier they, these were default so i will be declaring all of them as private what is a, what is the default uh, default specifier if if you do not provide yeah so okay. if it's if we do not uh, provide then it's a default uh, mod uh, access uh, default means that uh, any uh, in that the scope is inside that package only and if i'm providing private then it's uh, limited to that class only we are declaring them as private and then we are simply giving the getters only okay Uh, leave behind that is fine yeah. i mean okay. yeah that's okay yeah. mm -hmm. gets are okay so getters are fine then uh, we have declared it private and we have declared the getters only we are not giving the setters and okay. like if if we have some uh, i was talking about the deep cloning and then in that case we will be uh, do you want me to write that also like uh, i should include uh, include address class i, I mean uh, you put uh, you put that constructor first let's okay. let's take it from there okay so okay i will be writing the constructor of this class public we can like uh, we need uh, to we can declare both of the constructors as public like uh, the default and one with parameterized Mm -hmm. and so I will be writing the uh, okay now uh, you wrote the constructor here so uh, so so we can create a object for this right so uh, so now how are you restrict it uh, from uh, okay so changing uh, anything like you are restricting it without having setters in it yeah okay good right and uh, uh, you don't specify setters in them um, and uh, you don't create any uh, okay so since you made it final you cannot inherit that right. or in you cannot uh, extend that yeah. so that's where you are um, guarding that okay this is all okay so in case of uh, other other uh, collections right so basically if there is a list how i can make that immutable um, i don't want to make the list as part of this let's say like there are list of departments he is associated with okay now on 24th line if he has a list of de de departments he is associated with okay so we are having a list of departments like right? correct right so i don't want 
that uh, to be mm, mutated as well. Uh, so I want everything to be immutable as part of this class. How can I make sure that? I don't think we uh, need to do anything uh, differently for this. Uh. No, when you create an object of this employee, right? So uh, I can add something to this list, right? List dot add I can do whenever I got this employee dot uh, some departments uh, dot add I can do that, right? I can mutate that, right? So, like, <coughs> if we are having the list over here, then it will also be populated with uh, this only, right? Meaning? Yeah, yeah, I mean, what I mean to say is, like, we are creating object of employee and we giving back to the caller, right? Whoever is calling uh, the client, uh, we'll, be, we'll be giving him employee object completely, right? It will have ID, salary, name and departments also, which is a list. So, he can modify that list, right? So if I give once he has list. created uh, initially, he will provide definitely at least he will provide, and uh, now after that it's private, so uh, that's fine. Uh, after providing sure? creating one instance, it won't be able to uh, change it. Are you sure? See what I'm saying is like, can I can I not do list dot add if I if you return back something? Can I not do list dot add? You just tell me that. Can I do or can I not? I guess. You, we can do that also like after providing that but uh, yes 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 if we are changing something into the list and then we are trying to print that object then it will be changed right 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 right, 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 that's right. right. so uh, fine so uh, so you have worked on abstract classes and interfaces yes okay what is the difference between abstract class and interface I want to see from Java 1.8, like uh, from the standpoint okay. of Java 1.8 and above, like what is the difference between them? Okay, so the difference is very like minute now after Java 8. Yeah, like uh, the difference is only uh, that it's a class and that's an interface and we can implement multiple interfaces but mm -hmm. we can't extend multiple classes. That's the only uh, difference that's left after Java 8. Mm, I see. The rest all are same. Then can we remove that abstract class? Do you need that? Do you think like it is needed anymore? Like uh, from my perspective, like we don't require the abstract classes. Mm. Okay. Fine. Okay. So, uh, so how good uh, are you with uh, Spring Data? I mean, so you work on Spring Data JPA? And yes, or, I have worked uh, on JPA repository. Okay, no, JPA repository. Not with okay. Hibernate, yeah. Sorry? Uh, I haven't uh, worked on Hibernate. I use JPA repository. What is it? You use JPA. So yes. JPA runs on top of what? Uh, JPA is on the uh, top of CRUD repository only. It uses CRUD repository actually. So what is the internal... Uh, uh, what is the internal... Uh, what do you call that? It term? uses Spring ORM actually. Okay, fine. Uh, so how do you use Spring Data JPA? So, uh, so basically... Uh, so you access it from uh, directly from controllers or you access services and from no, there you no, no, no. Uh, Yes, from controller we are going to service layer and then we are creating the uh, DAO layer and into there we are creating the repository and mm -hmm. uh, like then uh, we are extending the CRUD repository and then there we are writing the methods whatever uh, if they are uh, by default methods and if we want to create like with some column name then we are creating a separate methods like find by ID, find by some column name. Mm, okay, so uh, what is the difference between at the rate entity and at the rate table? Yeah, so at the rate entity is uh, we are creating the entity into uh, the application like uh, this employee. If we are creating this as a model, so mm. I would have been used uh, at the rate entity over here. Entity mm -hmm. and the table is uh, for defining the like uh, for giving the table name. So so we are uh, with the table name we are. Uh, providing the name of the table uh, with this. If we are using some separate table, then we are providing the, that name into the table annotation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so in case of uh, um, multi-threading, how comfortable are you with multi-threading? 
लाइक आई एम अवेयर ऑफ द कंसेप्ट ऑफ मल्टी थ्रेडिंग बट लाइक प्रोफेशनली आई डेंट गेट एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू वर्क ऑन दिस ओके सो यू हैव नेवर वर्क ऑन देम और यू डिट गेट चांस आई मीन यू डिट वर्क ऑन एनी ऑफ द फ्रेमवर्क्स ऑफ मल्टी थ्रेडिंग Like have you heard of executor software? Yes, uh, have, yes. Like uh, I know about executor service, but mm. like, I I didn't get a chance to work. But if you want to know about the concept, then I can tell you. Okay. What is the, what is the uh, yeah? Wh- uh, where did you uh, or uh, what you know about executor services? Yeah. So executor services are like they are for creating a thread pool actually. So if we want like generally what happens is. one uh, how the life cycle of a thread is like it's uh, started like it's uh, running executing and then it's dead and after that uh, we are creating a new thread for some other process but if we want uh, like uh, 10 threads to serve this purpose again like by uh, ex- completing the several tasks again and again so same thread to be utilized again and again so using executor service we can create uh, there are methods like uh, fixed thread pool so we are mentioning like we want 10 threads so those 10 threads will be exe- picking up task again and again one one task is completed then it will be picking uh, finishing it then it's not dead in this case after term, uh, completing the task it will pick the next task so this way uh, it works into executor service mm. so uh, have you worked on microservices i see it from your profile yes. you worked on them yes okay so uh, So, where, I mean, what, what is the reason you use microservices? Yes. So, main reason is like uh, we just want uh, we wanted to divide the application into small, small modules actually. So, earlier that comp- that was uh, like heavy application. So, there were deployment issues, so like that. And uh, now, like uh, and development also like we we constantly keep on changing something. So then we can simply change into one module. So we do not need to. Uh, like do like that uh, uh, prevents our uh, testing efforts also we are not doing it for all the modules actually so mm-hmm. we can get to know that these are the impacted modules and one more is like scalability is the best uh, thing with the microservices so if we want to um, increase uh, like uh, suppose take uh, take uh, take an example of some e-commerce website so if we mm-hmm. have it like uh, we want there is some high traffic on product catalog then we can um, create multiple instances of that particular module only like for that module we are having 10 instances and for the login we are having one or two only so that way uh, we don't know uh, that that can prevent our cost actually so instead of uh, uh, making multiple instances of the complete application we are just uh, making more instances of single module so that's okay have you worked on any patterns on microservices yes so the patterns that we like uh, i can tell you about the, like uh, circuit breaker pattern and these uh, this we mm-hmm. uh, we used to have you used uh, uh, i mean any cloud 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 where you deploy this microservices or how is it no. where are you deploying this no like they are having their own servers and for our purpose like how we are checking so we are checking it through docker you are what is it sorry we, like uh, we we want to deploy our application and then test then we are using docker for that otherwise like for company they are having their own servers okay so you are you are testing it on docker and you are deploying it to your kubernetes yeah. you are deploying it to kube yes have you worked on kubernetes uh not uh, not more like uh, uh, my like main purpose is just uh, like the, this development part and uh, rest mm-hmm. try like i really uh, do that mm-hmm. okay so so you are aware of docker yes okay so uh, what are the majorly used uh, commands that you use on docker like what are commands that you use so uh, like that there is like a ctl command that uh, that is kube ctl right so you are talking about kubernetes yes no in docker i mean you said like you deployed to the docker and you test it right? yes yes for docker like for raising server uh, that up that we are having a, a docker uh, compose up uh, command and then we are having a docker build command and like compose we run with compose minus t and uh, that uh, docker build minus t so these uh, we use with this mm-hmm. what is build build minus t what is, what does that do 
that's for creating a image actually what is t uh t um, that, that i i don't know mm, okay have you used jnet and marketo yes testing okay so this. okay so um in case of jnet let's say like you have something um uh, some uh, you want to test some void method right so it doesn't return you anything so now how do you test that jnet uh, on jnet basis so we are using asserts on that only right i mean because it doesn't return any value how do you assert it yeah, like we compare some uh, and yes for if this uh, we are using assert okay yes yes so for that we are using do nothing method mm, do nothing on do do like, nothing is coming from what uh, from what like we are having a mokito dot do nothing method mm, okay and do you, you do anything else apart from do because do nothing does nothing right so basically you are uh, saying like do nothing when you are calling this method but uh, if you and want to validate we uh, we you... check for uh, like we are having uh, times like how many uh, times this has been executed so we are what is that method what uh, is that method that's like uh, mokito dot times and into the times we are passing the uh, mark is it mokito dot times sure uh, my uh, mokito dot verify it is into the verify you we pass the times. times yes right yes. okay um okay okay fine mm, okay so uh, in terms of devops right so uh, how comfortable are you there like in terms of devops like what how is your builds happening and how you deploy your applications yeah so like uh, um, you have any you have any hands on experience on it no Firstly. no actually we are using here bamboo and urban deploy so we don't need to do anything into that so i don't have any hands on experience do you have separate team handling that no we don't have separate team but these tools uh, bamboo and urban deploy uh, deploys uh, like it there is nothing uh, that we need to do we just need to there are already scripts present we just need to put our uh, we need to build our package and mm. put it into a specific location bamboo will automatically pick it up it will build and it will check for all the sonar validations and once the mm. build is successful then we uh, we just need to open the urban deploy and uh, there are various like uh, environment wise Uh, there are different roles created so we just need to run that build on that environment okay you didn't work on it right but uh, we know the process but you haven't worked on it right yeah mm, okay fine so in terms of uh, agile like what all uh, so are you on agile or uh, are you using yes. some other process yeah we are using agile methodology okay okay so what all you do as part of your agile yeah so uh, like uh, the complete methodology is like we are uh, the main part is the planning like continuous development of it so the sprint is of uh, five uh, like eight working days only that 15 days mm-hmm. sprint so we are doing is like we, uh, we are following uh, using jira for the like tracking purpose so each uh, story point should be uh, like uh, each jira can be of maximum two story points only so we are having daily scrum calls where we discuss the status like uh, are we lagging or we are on the track or we need some help or what's the progress actually just to the complete team updates like uh, uh, this thing we are doing uh, this part this stuff and then mm-hmm. like uh, at the time of uh, like uh, then every sp- after every sprint we uh, we have a retrospective after every two sprints actually so like what went bad and what we need to improve and uh, before okay. the starting of every sprint we have sprint planning so we provide uh, the efforts from our side that uh, we will be needing this much story points for this uh, jira and that that these are discussed in the calls that call that whether these are fine or we can reduce it and so after finalize then we start working on them mm-hmm. i'm just pinging you something on chat uh, so uh, so are you aware of roman number yes okay um, so let's say like you know uh, the symbols are like i gave you symbols like i represents 1 these phi x is 10 right all of that I, so yes. right so you, you must have learned it 
uh, yes, yes. earlier right so yeah. basically uh, so if i pass in 99 that's what it has to show if i pass in something like 29 let's say okay so if i pass in some 29 and it has to give me um, it has to give me access i x it has to be like this okay so if it is six normal six i have passed six like it has to give me vi right mm-hmm. if it is five it is v and if it is uh, 100 if it, it is c like this right so uh, do you know like uh, um, how can you uh, do uh, this um, as part of the program um, so that whenever i input some number i need to get back some um, roman number like this okay what what the approach that you follow okay Is it like uh, and this and this and then it can put to I think that's fine. That's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's taking more time. <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay. So, um, so what what is your uh, um, uh, uh, your future uh, aspirations and what do you want to be like? Uh, Like in your next like, next two years or next three years. Yeah, so definitely, if like I talk about the technology, so like um, things like what I have thought of is like learning few things like uh, AWS and uh, to be trying to be like uh, know more technology if uh, I get some chance on UI to become a good uh, like so that I can understand the complete application good. and uh, also and one one question here uh also in terms of ui like how good are you with ui uh, you are good at angular uh, yes uh, i have very very less experience but uh, that's uh, with the dynamic forms into uh, in angular 7 mm-hmm. okay fine that's uh, only 5 to 6 months only okay mm. okay so i just want to be like uh, um, if like what i have felt in times of there are production issues so you should know complete everything you should not be dependent on any uh, yeah, anything yeah, like that so right, you right. should know that complete application if you are good with ui also then you can understand and it's faster to de- uh, find the problem actually you can find in your you if you have coded it then you can definitely find uh, find it with the just seeing at the code at the first sight itself right yeah. right so, so that's like if you need to find in someone else code so you should know like the complete uh, complete application like all sure. the technologies from ui to back end so that's one perspective and also i want to learn something about uh, aws mm, okay so and uh, uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, your your experience like how 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 experience start you you mentioned like 5 years right you are yeah. into uh, java uh, yeah java five years. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, are you interested more into JavaScript or into Java? How is it? Uh, yes. Like into Java, like I think uh, I can work, and into Java script or Angular. If you talk, then I need to learn things. I'm interested in both. Okay. And in terms of one uh, other thing, like how good are you with SQL? Uh, with SQL? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I am good. I have worked on Joins as well as and created scripts and. Uh, like uh, nested okay. queries and everything i have used it like very uh, i'm good with it okay okay so in terms of uh, that right so so what is uh, what is the difference between a null uh, i mean unique key and a primary key a uh, unique key uh, primary key we can't uh, uh, it can't be null actually and it a mm-hmm. unique key it can be null mm-hmm. okay okay Okay, fine. So, um, and uh, you have you said like you worked on JPL, right? Okay, yeah. yeah I think I, I think I'm good. Uh,